Uh, Namita, uh, if I look at your segments, gynecology is the biggest one and you mentioned it as well, uh, followed by cardiovascular at 16% uh, and uh, anti-infectives at 11%. Uh, what are the kind of growth triggers that are, you have for especially cardiovascular and anti-infectives? Uh, is there enough uh, product pipeline in place uh, for you to push uh, growth there? Uh, Sachin, if you don't mind, you know, I will take this question uh, because, you know, uh, you must be aware of the fact, you know, very recently we entered into any licensing arrangement with Sanofi. As a result of which, you know, as far as cardiac segment is concerned, uh, we are in top three now as far as cardiology is concerned. So to that extent, uh, apart from, you know, Sanofi pipeline and the products, you know, we are developing in-house. So uh, we are very, what I would say, you know, uh, bullish about the cardiac segment. And as you know, that is one of the top segment in the industry. And as regards anti-infective, so it's a question of reach and penetration, you know, because we have increased our field strength. In Zoventus, and we incidentally have a lot of mega brands and we have sufficient, you know, scope to grow in those areas. And of course, you know, as we go along, we will also look at new molecules, you know, which we can introduce. Absolutely, Sajid. And you know, as you know, both the acute and chronic segments are poised for very strong growth. So uh, we have a good presence in both areas, acute as well as chronic, and we'll keep focusing on this with the investments we made in the additional field force as well. Mm -hmm. um Mr. Mehta, if you can give, give us uh, some more light on the Sanofi tie-up that you have, what kind of uh, revenue potential uh, will, will be there for you uh, go, uh, going over the next few years as you play out this in licensing agreement? It's, it's, it's going to be quite significant. I mean, I can't give you the numbers, but at the same time, it is one of the better deals you know, that has happened in the industry. And uh, we have been able to get you know, some Marquee brands you know, like uh, Cardis, Corderon, or even for that matter, Clexin. And uh, we are quite, you know, upbeat about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Namita, some of the top brands that you have uh, in the markets uh, like uh, Orofor or Metapure or Jostum or Bevon, uh, these are some of the four or five big brands that you that contribute a large uh, uh, portion to your revenues. Uh, what is the plan that you have to de-risk yourself from these uh, brands and uh, what are the kind of other pipelines, uh, product pipeline that you have so that, you know, your revenue can be diversified further? Sajit, uh, you've asked my favorite question and thank you for that. So one of uh, MQ's uh, strengths is making big brands bigger. If you see four years back, uh, what we define as big brands, we had 40. They're 63 right now. Uh, we've really mastered the art of picking areas where there's a white space, where we have strength, and then doubling down on that. So you mentioned brilliant brands, Oro for XT, Bevon, uh, you know, all of those, we will double down, we will make those bigger. We also have a strong R&D pipeline, some exciting new launches. And so between our new launches and our big brands, we will make sure that, um, you know, something that's MQ strength, that is brand building, will reflect in both the top line as well as the bottom line. Uh, mm -hmm. Sachin, if you allow me to add, you know, let me tell you one thing. Uh, we were the company, you know, which introduced so third generation thrombolytic tenecta place, you know, for stroke for the first time in our country. And here, you know, Ultiplace, the second generation is being marketed. And this particular product, you know, we launched only three or four years back. And in three years, you know, we have built a brand of 50 crores. I'm just giving you one example. And as far as this particular brand is concerned, it has a lot of potential because a lot of unmet needs, you know, as far as the stroke is concerned. Okay, so there are a number of brands, you know, which are in the range of, say, 50 to 100, that we can take it to 100. There are lots of brands, you know, which are 25 to 50. So to that extent, you know, I would be inclined to make a statement that the portfolio is fairly widely spread. It's not that, you know, that we are depending only on few brands. So we have multiple divisions, so each and every division, you know, has big brands, you know, that's what we do. Even for that matter, give you some example, you know, we launched Wilda Glipton, you know, I mean, when it went off patent. And that also is a brand, you know, of 50 crore plus. So we take pride in telling everyone, you know, that we are brand builders and that's what we have done. And Sajid, so uh, just one quick point. My father gave an exa excellent example of stroke. As you're well aware, the biggest problem in India are the three A's, right? The awareness, access, and affordability. But the awareness remains the biggest uh, gap. And so whether it's Oro for XT, where 57% Indian women are anemic and most don't know about it, or stroke that he mentioned, the biggest gap that MCURE is really taking leadership in is making more Indians aware 
early diagnosis through these multiple camps and workshops that we do and then that has a dual purpose right you you help people uh, become aware early diagnosis as well as build sales and make the brand bigger so this is something that we are truly committed to in areas like stroke anemia that remain big gaps in our country